mulligan. I don't remember what it is, but I know it's good because you can smell it down the hall. So please support our preschool and go to lunch if you want. I know it's early, so if you want to go to HEB and do your grocery shopping or whatever and then come back, um, understand it's a good time to shop for groceries. I don't have much experience in that regard. But anyway, come back about 11. There's a lot of things in your little boxes here, so be sure and note those colored boxes that we have in the bulletin of announcements of things coming up. One thing, I, Two things I want to highlight is Disciple Bible Study is today at 5. They've only met one week, so if you want to join, it's not too late. Uh, it's on studying Luke and Acts. And Pastor Tommy is the leader, and so it'll be an incredible class. If you have some time and you're interested in going deeper with the book of Luke and Acts, it is not too late to do that. Also, the newcomers class starts today in room 404 at 10 o'clock. If you are new to our church or if you have been here 20 years but want to learn more about the church, please know it's a great class to go and learn more about this particular church, about our denomination. You meet staff members, you meet Sunday school teachers. It is a wonderful opportunity. And Suzanne Brown is going to stand up and wave at us. She is our, one of the leaders of that class. So it's a wonderful opportunity also to make new friends. So be sure and note that as well. Um, boy, did I get through all of it? I think I did. Calendar of events on the back. Please take note of those things that apply to you and your family. Oh, yeah, I was just checking to see if something was there. So check and make sure you don't miss anything special this week. In my other hand, I have a pink card that should be on your pew. We're in the season of stewardship, and in this church family, stewardship is more than money. It's prayers, presents, gifts, service, and witness. That's right. And so today we're going to be focusing on the power of prayer. And if you would be so kind as to fill this card out, pray over it. Fill the card out, tear the top part off with notes to yourself so you remember what you committed to, okay? And then drop that in the plate or leave it in the basket in the foyer following the service. The other thing you can do, I, this would be really powerful if you want to come for communion and kneel at the rail and leave it here. And that would be wonderful as well. So just know that is another wonderful opportunity. Please sign the red books that you'll find in the pew rack. It's a little red folder and pass that down the pew so that you might meet a new neighbor. You never know. Um, and so that we can pray over you, we pray over those every week. So that we can pray over you. If you have a prayer concern, that's a great place to write it down. We'd be love to see that. I didn't actually get to see them this week because I was out of town all week. But they're on my desk ready for me to pray over this afternoon. So please sign in on those. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we are tickled pink that you're here. Isn't that a good Texas phrase? We're tickled pink that you're here. Please stop at the welcome desk and grab a uh, gift for first-time visitors. It would bless us to be able to give that to you, okay? If there's no other... Oh, Les Fenter, where are you? Ooh, ow, injuring himself. Les has an announcement about mentoring. <laughs> well, it's tough to have arthritis at every joint. Son of a gun, anybody here ever have arthritis? Okay, so we pray about that morning when we get up. How about you? Who here reads the upper room regularly? Quite a few of you. Did you read it this morning? Yes or no? Okay, well, today's upper room said what I needed to say, so I'm just going to go to the upper room for today. Um, it was just amazing. It's by Julie Lavender of Georgia. Here's what she said. Most mornings as I put my contacts in, I pray, thank you, God, for the gift of sight. But one morning after a difficult night at church with teenagers, hmm, I use the time instead for a gripe session. I'm done, God. I'm through volunteering with youth. Oh, gosh, this, I knew this was going to happen. Sorry. They're disrespectful. They're just a bunch of self-absorbed kids who can't focus even for one minute on anything else. All the while, I fought with my contacts. I fumbled one, flipped the other, aloud, I half-heartedly asked God, what are you trying to tell me? That I'm seeing this all wrong? Well, some thought, I realized that I had been the self-absorbed one. Instead of seeing the young person with recently separated parents, I saw misbehavior. Instead of someone with an underage drinking problem, I saw disrespect. We all should have seen 
one struggling with a cutting problem. Instead, I saw anger. God reminded me that Jesus, quote, took the children in his arms, Mark 10, 16. He loved them, cared for them, and was deeply concerned about their lives. And we were called to show the same compassion. Then I prayed for the kids, their issues, and for my blurred vision. And I vowed rather than showing them my disapproval, I think I would show them love. God just might want us to relate to everyone this way, especially the children. And her prayer is as follows. Would you pray with me? Dear God, help us to love your children as Jesus does, with arms wide open and hands ready to bless. We're the only, amen, in Christ's name I pray, amen. We're the only church in Marble Falls across from a middle school. What are we called to do with these kids over here? Over half of them live under the poverty level. And that means they're dysfunctional homes because there may not be a parent at home or a grandparent at home when they get home from school and they don't have a place to study and they don't know what to study and they're not encouraged to study and they watch TV or their parents watch TV or they push them off to play on their little game box while their parents do something else. What they need, I believe, is for someone that is a faithful Christian who will go to them and let them know that they're okay just to be a friend to them. So I would ask you if you would consider spending about half an hour a week on either a Monday, Wednesday, or a Friday at 2.35 p.m. One day a week, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday at 2.35 p.m. If you'd consider just reading with one of these kids. And if they read, it's good. And if they don't read, it's okay. If all they do is ask you a question or two and you get to answer it, that will be great. And if one day after you've made friends with them, they say, why are you doing this? Thank God for that opportunity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Les. And now let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Morning, church. Let's worship together. Here we go. Your love has captured me. Your grace has set me free. Your life, the air I breathe, be glorified in me. Your love has captured me. Me. Your grace has set me free. Your life, the air I breathe, be glorified in me. Set my feet to dancing. You set my feet to dancing. Set my heart on fire. The presence of a thousand kings. I'm on my knees, and I stand before you now with trembling hands.
Cause my feet are dancing You set my feet to dancing Set my heart on fire In the presence of a thousand kings You are my one these And I stand before you now Trembling hands Glorified in me, be glorified in me, be glorified in me, be glorified in me, be glorified. He sets my feet to dancing. He set my feet to dancing. He set my heart on fire in the presence of a thousand kings. You are my one desire. I stand for you now, trembling hands and feet out. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Jesus is better, made my heart 
glory. Glory, glory. We have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. Glory, glory. We have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. We raise the anthem, our loudest praises ring. We crown Him Lord of all. We crown Him Lord of all. We crown Him Lord of all. Father God, we do this morning crown You Lord of all, Lord, and we just uh, we thank You for for Your deliverance. Um, for your salvation, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that our hearts and minds be just fixed on, on what you have for us, for us this morning. Lord, I just, again, I thank you for everyone here, Lord, and I pray for special blessings just on the families represented here, Lord. Um, thank you for allowing us to come together um, just to worship you and to declare how how amazing you are and how grateful we are for the things that you do for us. Love you, Father. Amen. You unravel me with a melody You surround me Song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God, and I'm no chosen me love has called my name and I've been born again into your family your love goes through my veins and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am child of God and I'm no
Church, you may be seated, but I might ask you to continue to pray with me. God, as I begin to pray, the last chorus of what we just sang is, is, is really heavy on my heart and my mind. God, I want to pray for all of those who have a sense of fear, because they don't know where they are in relationship with you. God, I want to pray that all the ways in which that fear affects us from not knowing our neighbors uh, to big decisions to small. Uh, Let us be reminded that we are your child and you love us and you want us to go love others. Don't let that fear hold us back. Now, God, as we gather, I want to pray for all of those who are are still dealing with the the recent floods and the storms. Uh, That we hear it on the news for two days, but as we know here because of our flood, the damage stays down longer than just two days. God, I want to lift up all of those uh, finding ways to serve us, the uh, police force, first responders, and those within the military, those who uh, make our lives uh, as convenient and safe as they are. God, I know that my brothers and sisters here in this church have specific concerns and things that are heavy on their mind. I thank you that when we pray, you are with us. I thank you that when we pray in this building, we pray as a church. God, turn your ear and let your spirit be on it as we lift up the things that are heavy on our heart. you for the gift of prayer. Thank you for all the opportunities we have to prayer, both in groups and on our own. Thank you for the message we're about to hear as we focus on the important task of us praying as a church. God, thank you for being with us. We say all this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite the children to please come down for children's time. for me. That's okay. This is a different box. Doesn't look a little bit different. I think it might be a story box, but no, it doesn't smell like a story box. It kind of looks like an old music box. (laughs) Thank you guys. Let's see what happens when we open the music box. <gasps> oh, I'm going to close that real quick. Do you guys recognize that song? Yeah, Jesus Loves Me. Can you sing that song with me when I open it up? Maybe the church will help us sing it too. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him behold, they are weak, but He is strong. You know, that was kind of fun to 
sing, but when we pray as kids, often we pray out loud. I know you are. But sometimes grown-ups pray with their heart and their mind. I kind of want to practice that version of grown-up prayer. Let's try this. When we sing Jesus Loves Me, let's sing it really, really hard with our hearts and our mind. Got those mixed up when I pointed. Let's do that. Even as a church, when the music plays, let's try and pray, sing really, really loud, okay? All right. Sorry. <laughs> you, you guys did really, really good with our mouths, but sometimes we pray with our hearts. Let's try and pray with just our hearts, okay? That was a little bit different, but thank you guys for doing that. You know, after we pray at the end, we always say the words out loud. Let's try and practice that lesson we just learned and say it really big with our hearts after I pray, okay? All right, let's see if the grown-ups will listen this time. <laughs> Dear, Jesus, Dear Jesus, I said pray with our hearts, guys. <laughs> Said, I told you the grown-ups wouldn't listen. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you we can use our mouth. Thank you that we can use our heart. We can go ahead and say this last part out loud. And thank you, and thank you for everything you do, Jesus. For everything you do, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yay, Jesus! <laughs> Let's have a moment of prayer for our offering. Dear God, thank you so much for the chance to give. Thank you so much for allowing what we give to this church to do such amazing things. We truly do save souls and change hearts. God, allow these gifts to amplify that goal and allow us to be in service to you and your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Was and is and is to come. The whole creation I see praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you.
golden rainbows of living colors flashes of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you Amen. As our offering comes forward, I'll be thankful for a couple things. One is uh, we have wonderful music here. We have this wonderful praise band. Uh, we also have a choir, and we also have a children's choir, which is where some of the children were during children's time. Um, but I want to especially be thankful and pray for all of the work that the little ones have been doing in their songs, and pray that they're not nervous as they get ready to sing for next service. And I'm thankful for all those who volunteered and all the work the children have put for. I like to say, thanks be to God. This time I'd like to invite our stewardship speaker to come forward. I believe it's Rich. Good morning. What is prayer? Prayer is simply communicating with God. Why should we pray? Prayer develops our relationship with our Heavenly Father and helps us to grow closer and more intimately connected with Him. When we lift our concerns to the Lord, we are surrendering our self-reliance and confess that we are dependent on Him. When we took our membership vows when joining the United Methodist Church, we promised to faithfully participate in the church ministries through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. I think it's important to notice that prayer is the first thing on that list. All aspects of what we do should begin with prayer. The power of prayer is evident at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Harara, Zimbabwe. The church, hosts, uh, the church hosts early morning prayer services that draw as many as 500 people. Imagine that. The corporate prayer gathering or starts, it goes from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. 
each day and they are focused on individuals, on individual prayers. Exter Giacomo, 82, a pioneer of the St. Mark's Prayer Program, said some people travel more than 20 miles from nearby towns to attend on Saturday. We mainly pray for ourselves, our church, and our nation, Giacomo says. Early morning prayers are more powerful than any of those done at any other time of the day. It takes a lot of willpower to rise up and leave the comfort of your bed at such an early hour, she said. I hear that. But our prayer time may not look exactly like that. Ours could be just getting up early before work or our day begins and have that special time with God and his word, looking at our devotions, reading scripture. Or it may be prayer, a prayer walk with your, by yourself or with a friend. Or it could be corporate prayer where you come together with others and pray for the needs of each individuals, the church, our nation. Whatever it may look like in your life, when we took that vow to pray, the people in Zimbabwe took it seriously. They made an effort. And I pray God not knowing each individual heart, but I think prayer obviously is important in this body. We have seen it in the past, present, and I know we will see it in the future. You have a list of opportunities here to pray for. I won't go over those because you can read. We got that. What do you want to ask for? You need and look for God's answers. Pay attention, listen, and give thanks for so much that we already have. What a blessing it is. I pray and encourage you all to fill out this little card, keep it as a reminder, and use it and look for it in your daily walk. Thank you. Scripture reading today will be from the book of Philippians, fourth chapter, verses four through nine. Words will be on the screen. I'm sure you can find it somewhere in your pew Bibles. I don't know what page. <laughs> this is the word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Pastor Clay. Wow. I don't know about you all, but after less inspiring me and then the morning prayer and the children's, what we did there and the whole morning so far. Thank you, Rich, for preaching my sermon this morning. Uh, now you're just going to have to sit and listen to it again. <laughs> but it bears repeating. Now I just thank you all so much. This has been a beautiful start, a beautiful worship service this morning. Uh, would you join with me in prayer? Almighty God, 
Sometimes we come to you with great joy in our hearts, and sometimes, Father, we struggle. But we always want to come to you, and we do now. We come in prayer asking you to bless us in this time as we, as we open your word and we hear it, and Father, we apply it to our lives. Bless us now, in Jesus' name. Rich uh, opened and mentioned our, our stewardship series and that this is the week when we're discussing a prayer and, and he said what I was going to say about uh, no wonder that prayer is listed first. I think probably prayer, I don't know, the most important thing in our Christian lives. Once we've become a Christian, once we've accepted Christ, once we, we know who and where we are, then that communication with God, that continually being in touch with God through prayer, uh, just cannot be underestimated. It's the most important part of our Christian life. All week I've been wondering about, I've been preparing, I'm working on this sermon, I thought, well, what am I going to say? It's, it's talking about prayer in this church is like preaching to the choir. This is a praying church. There are so many folks here that I know that, that pray, and I, I know that there are some folks that struggle with prayer because we talk about that too. But if there was any point in a whole sermon on prayer, Ellen gave me this word this morning. It just popped up and it came, and that's encouragement. To encourage us in our prayer life, to encourage us in our communication with God, to encourage us as we get together or singly alone, but as we want and try to communicate with God. I just, I said that, you know, prayer is difficult for some, and it is because I've been in some discussions this past week with several different individuals and several groups. Uh, one group that I meet with weekly, I asked about their prayer lives this week. I said, tell me about your prayer. Tell me about what's, what's really great for you and tell me about what's difficult for you. Tell me about the, the verses that you use that draw you into prayer. And it was very enlightening. It was beautiful. And then I talked about our text for today and I want to talk about that for a little bit this morning. Paul wrote to those Philippians, to the church in Philippi, which was one of his favorite little churches, it appears, from from other documents and his letters and so on. He said, don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Unfortunately, for most of us, and I know it's true for me, I'm sure it is for you, that, that sometimes in private prayer, when, we're, when our eyes are closed or open or driving or just sitting in an easy chair or kneeling at an altar, but sometimes our mind gets distracted. <laughs> Did your mind ever wander off about the things you needed to pick up at HEB after church when you were in prayer? Maybe not that specific, but generically so. Do you ever wonder sometimes, it just, your mind just goes away? One of the things I learned a long time ago to deal with that was to just say, okay, not now. I'll come back to you later and to continue in my prayers without being upset about it, without being worried about it, without it being a part of a, you know, a, a long thing that just, just bothers me and I get upset. Just It's okay. But I read something this week about John Wesley, what he said about interruptions in prayer, and when your mind gets focused on something else, John said, maybe that's God bringing something else to your mind to pray about. Maybe that is God trying to tell you that you need to pray about this thing that keeps interrupting your thoughts. And I thought, you know, that's really good. So I've been trying to use that some of the times in my, in my prayers. Praying, as, as uh, Rich just really went through all this, this, this conscious way of trying to reach out to God and to listen to God. There are a lot of different encouraging ways that can help us with our prayers, and I'll talk about a, a couple of those. Uh, first of all, uh, 
I want to look at Jesus for just a moment. I think Jesus' whole focus in his whole life was his relationship with the Father. He tells us time and time again about the Father. And he leads us to the Father. Jesus never once said, uh, bow down and worship me. Jesus always said, worship the Father. Worship God. And I thought, you know, then the disciples say to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Now these were men and women who had been praying probably since they could utter first words. The typical Jewish household was full of prayers day and night. Scripture, their scriptures and especially the Psalms are, are just filled with prayers. So I'm certain the disciples had learned prayers in synagogue or other teachings. They, had, they knew how to pray. But they saw something in Jesus. They saw in Jesus this pattern that he had of going away often to be by himself, to spend time with his Father, to pray and to worship, not distracted by the daily happenings of life. They see in Jesus this example and they want to be like him. Which I think like we do sometimes. So they say, Lord, teach us to pray. And he does. There are a few prayer helps that I was looking at this week that I'd like to share with you this morning. Uh, sometimes, you know, we need something to to warm our spirits, if you will. Uh, I guess a better way to say that would be get us in the mood or to help us enter into a period of prayer. And that best way to help us is with Scripture. With the Bible, with reading verses, with reading familiar verses, maybe with reading unknown verses, with the morning devotion that's printed in the upper room like Les mentioned this morning that will lead us to a Scripture that will help us begin and help us warm up, help us, help us begin with prayer and, and start again anew, afresh, each time so that prayers don't become just uh, boring, uh, the same old thing day after day, the same old thing time after time. Uh, I don't think Jesus' prayers were like that. I think Jesus in his prayers uh, focused on what was at hand. And we can read that in especially uh, the final prayers uh, before he went to the cross. There's a lot of debate about uh, this little help, but I think using prayers written by others is a good way to open channels of prayer for yourself. And I have done this frequently and still do. I like uh, different books of prayers and will occasionally open some and, and, and look for things that, that, that at that moment I think God is trying to tell me or got, trying to reach me and be able to pull that out and be able to use that uh, in, in my prayers. Uh, God speaks to us about needs, speaks to me about needs in others through the prayers of others. And I try to use that sometimes as a, as a jump start, if you will, Plus, I think that sometimes uh, other people's prayers make interesting reading. <laughs> Try sometime to write down your prayers. Keep a little notepad or a journal or whatever you want to call it or something. And sometimes when you're praying or when you're beginning to pray, write down notes about it. And go back and visit those notes later again when you pray. You can kind of think of this as a as an email or a letter to God, if you will, but it has helped me in my prayer life tremendously sometimes to make notes about what I'm praying or what I think God is leading me to, to pray about. And then, uh, finally, uh, these little hints. Just as uh, everyone, athletes and, and all others, develop from, from a hab habitual routine of exercise, doing the same thing over and over again, practicing, practicing, practicing. The same holds true for prayer. 
You don't start off by being just a, a magic uh, a prayer, but you do continually and you practice and you pray and you pray. And, and I, don't, I hate to use the phrase that says you get better, uh, but I think you become more comfortable in your prayers. You become more, I don't want to say more fluent with God, but you do. You become just more relaxed in the prayer presence of God as God begins to fill you, as the Holy Spirit begins to work with you in your prayers. I liked our text for this morning. It's not one of the standard uh, prayer texts that we would use for a sermon, but I like it for, for, for what it says at the beginning and throughout it. First of all, in, in verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. When you come into prayer, when you come to God, we may be sad sometimes, we may be in joy sometimes, but with prayer is always a time to rejoice that God is listening, that God is part, that God cares, and that your prayers are heard. Paul wrote there, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. <laughs> I like the line. Do not be anxious about anything. Lord, you know I'm anxious about everything. All the time, it seems like. I think we live anxious lives. I, in this the 21st century, I don't know how we can avoid anxious lies. Paul said, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, how? By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. That's, uh, excuse me, I have a little allergy issue, and uh, my eyes are weeping. I'm not sure it's allergies or the Holy Spirit this morning. <laughs> but they have been weeping. And then he, he winds up this, this short paragraph in verse 7 with one of, our, one of our favorite little prayer phrases that we use a lot of times, especially when we do benedictions or, or things like that. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Can I say that again? And the peace of God. Peace of God, which transcends all understanding. The peace of God, which we can't even fathom, will fill our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If there was a, if there was a goal of prayer, for me, that would be the goal. Just the peace and understanding of God. Did you catch those, those key phrases? Anxious in nothing, prayerful in everything, and then thankful in anything. For all and everything, thankful. I saw a, uh, I remembered, and then, and then I saw this again a while back, a, a classic Dennis the Menace cartoon, and Dennis is walking down the street, and Lucy yells at him, I mean, she never speaks, she yells. She, she yells at him from, from, from a little distance away, I'm not speaking to you, Dennis Mitchell. Well, Dennis's eyes roll back in the next block, and he says, thank you, God. <laughs> there are a lot of things to be thankful for in life. I think for everything. I wonder... This is just a side note. I, I, I wonder on the 39th day if Noah went up on the top deck of the ark and thanked God for the rain. <laughs> I would, don't know. But thankful in everything, especially when he thought that that was God's will. Anxious in nothing, prayerful in everything, thankful in anything, and then the peace. Rich mentioned the, the pink card that we have. I knew it was pink, and I should have worn a pink shirt, but I didn't. I just went picked out this red shirt, but it's close enough. These are so important. 
They're not just important to the church. They're not just important to us as we, uh, uh, you know, uh, fill it out and put it on the rail or in the basket or out on the, out on the desk and as we uh, write out our little commitment, vow of prayer on the top and tear up the top. It's not important to us as the church. It's important to each one of us individually as a person, as a prayer. This card is important to each one of us as a prayer. And the reason I say that is I get sidetracked. I get off in different things. I lose focus. And sometimes maybe this might help me a little bit more. What helps me the most in this church to remember uh, who to pray for and the prayers that we need is the prayer list that's out in the narthex on the desk out there. Uh, we used to print uh, 50 or 60 of those, I think, a week. And there were about 20 or 30 left over. Now we're printing about 20 or 30, and there's still about 10 or 15 left over. Uh, we, can, we can improve on that. Before you leave today, as long as they're available, pick up one of those prayer lists that's out there on the, on the desk in the narthex and take it home with you. Take it in the car with you. It doesn't matter wherever you are, whatever you're doing, but there are names on there that may just pop out that you can pray for. There are situations, there are people. Use that. There are so many things we can do. This afternoon, you're probably going to, I'm, I'm thinking, you're going to get an email from Pastor Ellen with an invitation to consider becoming a part of, of a church-wide prayer team. We're, we're truly focusing on prayer and improving prayer. Uh, improving, that's a harsh word, I don't mean that. Prayer and building prayer in this church. We've already started uh, probably almost a year ago, but, but Rich and Jim and several others have started a, a twice a week uh, corporate prayer meeting when they meet in the, in the parlor on Mondays and Wednesdays and, and folks come and, and pray for whatever God leads them to pray for. It's it's not structured, it's just prayer time. And you're invited. And if there's an, an inconvenient time that you'd like to be a part of a, a, a prayer unit, a prayer group, a prayer team, uh, let us know because we're flexible with times. But if you've got time on, uh, on a Monday or Wednesday at noon, come join us. Come join Rich and, and Jim in, in the, in the uh, parlor for our corporate prayer time. Ellen mentioned in the announcements at the beginning that we're beginning the first week of our disciple Bible study this evening at 5 o'clock. Next week's study is totally focused on prayer from the book of Acts. And it's a real in-depth study of prayer. So I would invite you to come and become a part of that. How many of you know what this little room is down over here on the side, down here at the, at the corner? I see a few hands. Most, a lot of people. It's the, the sign on the door says prayer room. Uh, I've used it a few times, not as much as I probably should have, I admit that. But it'd be nice to, to see the prayer room back in use again. I titled the sermon this morning, uh, after much thought, The Joy of Prayer. Because prayer is a joy. Just being in the presence of God and hearing God's voice or just being there calm and peaceful in that peace which encompasses all understanding. To be in prayer with God is, I, I can't think of anything, I don't know how to phrase this really, anything better in the whole church than being in prayer. Here, at home, in your car, wherever we are. And my encouragement for you this morning is that as you continue, as you continue developing in, in your Christian life and, and going and doing and whatever you're doing, let's become more intentional about prayer. Really intentional about prayer. And I know that your, your pastoral staff is, 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 is preparing to lead the way. And I know that the rest of the staff is preparing to lead the way. Many lay people in the church. Let's become more, let's become the praying the praying congregation, the praying people, the praying church. Amen?
I'm going to do two things. Wipe my tears here. My nose. And then I'm going to do my hands. Now we're ready. Gracious God, we thank you for your holy word and we thank you this morning for, for drawing us closer to you in so many different ways. We thank you, O oh God, for this gift of prayer, of God, you're a God who listens to us, who wants to listen to us, who wants us to talk to you. We thank you this morning for that blessing and all others. In Jesus' name, amen. We gather together to remember so many things about Jesus. This morning we're remembering our life and his life in prayer. And part of that was that last evening on earth as the being that he was when he gathered with his disciples in the upper room celebrating the Passover. A celebration, probably full of many prayers. Prayers that were part of the Passover liturgy. During the evening, he took some bread from the table and gave thanks to you, O oh God. And he broke the bread, passed it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And then he took a cup from the table gave thanks to God for the fruit of the vine. And he said to the disciples gathered there, this is a cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And so we gather again to remember Jesus and what he has done for us. Almighty God, pour out your blessings on these, these gifts of ordinary bread and ordinary grape juice. Make them be for us, O oh God, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, as we take the presence of Christ with us throughout the whole world. Pray the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory for it. Amen. This morning, with the understanding that there are, are uh, those amongst us who, who uh, don't tolerate uh, uh, the gluten in bread very well, we, we have gluten-free elements for you this morning, and we invite you as you come forward to ask for those, if, if that be your desire. You may notice this morning that some folks will leave a, a monetary offering uh, on the uh, altar rail, uh, that is a gift for our uh, for our uh, helping fund. We, I'm trying to remember, last month I think thirty five thousand thirty five hundred dollars we helped folks that came in the door all month, and this is where it, this is where it comes from. It's not necessary, it's not a, a, a obligatory, but it's just one of those things where, uh, if you would like to do that, uh, please do. Uh, we will celebrate uh, communion this morning by method of intention. You'll be given a piece of bread and a cup to dip your bread in and then partake of both elements that way at the same time. If those, yeah, if those were, there was something else I was going to say and I don't remember what it was. Okay, so if those who are assisting would come forward at this time, please do it, and we shall begin. Oh, everyone's invited. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it was. Everyone is invited. If you believe in Jesus Christ, or, or you have the desire to try to believe, if you want to, come on down. And John Wesley said that this was, 
uh, an ordinance uh, of helping people come to Jesus. And I believe that. May my life be 
have surrendered We worship at your throne All for you, Jesus The true and only one Our King eternal Who was and is to come Your name is Jesus The true and only one Our hearts surrendered band will continue playing for a few minutes. If you uh, didn't have a chance to come to the altar and pray during uh, communion and you'd like to do so uh, as they fi continue to play, we invite you. Uh, if there are uh, some who wish to come and pray with the pastor, we invite you just to come and extend your hand so that we'll see that and, and we would uh, love to pray with you. If there are some here who would like to join or become a part of our, our fellowship, our membership, come on down as the band continues to play. Oh, Jesus, true and only, ever reigning on your throne. May my life be true and only, yours and yours alone. Yours and yours. As we prepare to, uh, to leave this morning, uh, I would encourage you uh, to remember that at 11, the missions committee is going to be serving their fifth Sunday lunch, and you don't have to leave and come back. You can actually go to Sunday school and then go eat. Or you can go to the newcomers class and then go eat. Or you can fellowship with the rest of us and then go eat. But have a wonderful time. And uh, I just want to say that may God richly bless you as you continue in your prayer life with him. Go now in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Your love has captured me Your grace has set me free.